In this video, let's see how we can build a RESTful API in Go using only standard Go packages. Go 1.18 introduced a bunch of updates to the net slash HTTP package that make building a full featured RESTful API completely doable without any external packages. So let's jump right in and make a RESTful API in Go. To start, we'll create a fake in-memory database in our database.go file. This stores a map of client ID to the profile data for our two customers. The API we'll create will be able to authenticate client requests and retrieve and update customer profile data. Let's start in our main.go file and import the net slash HTTP package which will power our API. And let's define our empty main function. So we're going to use the http.handlefunc function to define an endpoint. The first input is the path. We're building an endpoint for managing user profiles, so we'll call this slash user slash profile. The second parameter is a function which will actually handle the request. This is called a handler function. Let's call this handle client profile, which we'll define in a second. Finally, let's log some information out and start the server on port 8080 with the http.listen and serve function. Okay, let's go ahead and define the handle client profile handler. I'll do this in the same folder inside a handlers.go file. A handler function needs to take in a response writer and a pointer to the request. So the response writer handles the writing of the response we want to send back to the caller, whereas the request variable contains information about the incoming request. Things like the method type, payload data, headers, and so on. We're going to make this function just be a router to another function depending on the request method. For this tutorial, we're going to allow get and patch requests to the slash user slash profile endpoint, where the get request will just return the user profile, and with the patch request will allow the profile to be updated. To do this, we'll use a switch statement, checking the method type in the request object, and we'll call the appropriate handler function. Otherwise, we'll return an HTTP error with method not allowed status. For now, we'll create these empty handlers below. All right, so for our get client profile, we'll require the client ID to be passed in as a query parameter. So the request variable contains this information. Calling r.url.query.get and the name of the parameter will get us the value. We'll try to use this to look up the client profile in our database. If the client ID does not exist or the client ID was not passed in at all, we'll return a forbidden message in the status forbidden error code. If everything's okay, we'll return the client profile excluding the token. And write the data as a JSON to the response writer. Let's try it out. So without a client ID, we get a forbidden message. With a client ID not in the database, we get the same message. Finally, we got a response with a valid client ID. All right, so how about accepting a payload? Suppose we want to allow clients to update their name and email. We'll start filling out this update client profile function in the same way as for the get method, checking for a valid client ID. For the payload data, we'll expect it to be in the same form as our client profile type which we were using in our database. We can try and decode this body into our client profile struct using the JSON decoder. The decoder takes a request payload from r.body and we call the decode function, passing in a pointer to where we want the data to go. If the error value is not nil, we throw a bad request error. Now when we read the body, the underlying data is actually streamed in on demand, i.e. the network connection between the client and the server remains open. So we have to close this connection by calling the close function when finished. This frees up resources and closes the connection. The defer statement means we execute this line of code before the function exits, no matter what. Lastly, we update the profile information and return a success status. Let's try it out. We change our method type to patch and pass in a payload with a changed email. Now if we call the get endpoint again, we can see that the data was indeed updated. Nice work. Now allowing anyone who calls the endpoint to get and update any client information doesn't make much sense. So let's take a look at how we would add authentication to our endpoints. The best way to do this is by using middleware. Middleware is similar to wrappers in other languages. It's a function which takes in a function and returns another function. Let's define this authentication middleware in our auth.go file. In the case of middleware for our API, it will take in and return a particular type of function, 
which is the handler func type. We saw this type before with our get client profile and our update client profile function. So our token auth middleware will take in a handler func and return a handler func. So now let's fill out this function. The first step is again to validate the client ID as we did before in our other handlers. The auth method we'll use here is a bearer token. This is a token which is passed in through the header under the authorization key. We'll compare this token to what we have in our database for the client. So let's make a helper function here which checks if the token starts with a bearer prefix and then checks that it matches what we have in our database. If it doesn't, we again throw a forbidden status here. If all is good, we'll call the next handler in line. In our case, we don't have any other middleware, so this will just be the handle client profile handler. Now to apply this middleware, let's go back to our main function and wrap our handler client profile with the middleware function. To do this, let's create a middleware type, which again is just a function which takes in a handler func and returns another handler func. And we can define a list of all our middleware, which for us is just the token auth middleware function. In our main function, first we'll define our dummy handler variable, which just points to our handle client profile function. Then continuously wrap this function with the list of middleware. Lastly, this handler will now be passed into the handle func function. So this works, but we got one more useful thing you should know when creating APIs in Go, and that's the request context. One thing you might have noticed is that we repeated this block of code in all three of our handler functions. This block queries the database and validates the client ID. So for example, when I go to update the client profile, first the database is queried in our authentication middleware, then again in the update client profile handler in order to grab the client profile. It seems unnecessary to make these calls to the database multiple times for the exact same data. This is where we can use request context. In our auth middleware, we can store the client profile data for use in other parts of the request stack. So we'll import the context package, and we can store the client profile with these two lines of code under the client profile key. Now the request variable has a client profile data within its context. In our get client profile handler, now we can just grab the stored client profile under the client profile key. Then we're just casting it to the client profile struct type. Similarly in the update client profile method. So now we avoided calling the database multiple times for the same data. And the client ID validation only occurs in the auth middleware function. Now let's go and try out our new fancy API. If we try to update the profile information for client 2 without a bearer token, we get a forbidden error. If we pass in the right token, we get a happy response. We can check this work by switching back to the get request. And we got the updated field name. And that's how you build a fully featured RESTful API in Go using only native packages. Thanks for watching.